Hello everyone, I'm Taina Baldon, and I'm here to present our work I developed with Professor Marcos Massimo and Professor Takashi Yoneyama called Optimizing Univector Field Navigation Parameters Using CMAS. This is the agenda that we'll cover today. We will start with an introduction, followed by an overview of Univector Field Navigation, Evolutionary Algorithms, and CMAS. Then I'll talk about the methods applied to this work and the results and conclusions obtained. Finally, I'll discuss some future works and give an acknowledgement. To encourage and stimulate research in mobile robotics, several robot soccer competitions are held worldwide, such as the HIIII Very Small Size Soccer (VSS). A VSS game is like any soccer match. The winner is the team that scores more goals. The robots can only perform actions based on their communication with a computer. To do so, there is a camera over the field that captures the game images. So, we use computer vision algorithms to process these images and obtain the balls and robot's positions. After acknowledging these positions, a decision-making algorithm decides what each robot should do – defend, attack, and etc. It also decides which is the most appropriate path planning method to achieve the robot's goal. After reaching these decisions, the robot's control system transforms them into something doable by the robot's hardware, computing each robot's wheel speed for the next iteration. Then we send these speeds via radio to the robots. Finally, the robot's firmware processes these messages and takes some action. A path planning method widely used in the VSS League is called Univector Field Navigation. It is based on a well-known idea in path planning, potential fields. This method uses an analogy between a soccer field and a field that contains positive and negative electrical charges. In this field, each robot sees the other robots and the field walls as charges of the same signal since it intends to avoid collision with these obstacles and, therefore, to be repelled from them. In addition, the robot sees the ball as a charge with the opposite signal, since it intends to score goals and therefore to be attracted to it. However, the univector field navigation implementation differs from that of a typical potential field, and we'll discuss the main differences later in this presentation. A downside of univector is that its implementation involves determining nine heuristic parameters. As the Etandroids VSS team uses Univector as its primary path planning method, we decided to use evolutionary algorithms, particularly CMAS, to obtain an optimized set of Univector parameters. We chose to use CMAS because it is one of the best known black box optimization algorithms. According to OpenAI, it rivals with modern methods of deep reinforcement learning. Also, it has shown excellent results in the robot soccer field. Univector field navigation is composed of two fields. The move to go univector field is one of them. It combines two hyperbolic spiral fields that drive the robot to its destination with the desired angle. The other one is the avoid obstacle univector field a repulsive field that uses virtual obstacles to predict obstacles' movement and help robots avoid collisions. Evolutionary algorithms are those that provide the user with a set of candidate solutions to evaluate a problem. They are based on the principle of biological evolution, in which mutation and selection of genes are applied to a population to obtain the best individuals. In the context of computing, evolutionary algorithms work like this. First, we randomly generate a population of samples, generally using a normal distribution. Then, while determination criteria are not met, we evaluate a fitness function for each sample, use the fitness values to select the samples for the next iteration, and apply variation operators to transform the selected samples into additional samples from the search space. 
A simple evolutionary algorithm evolves the population by only adopting the mean of the probability distribution as illustrated in this animation. Even though this approach will work for many problems, it has some downsides, as it maintains the covariance parameter fixed. For example, if we are far from the optimal solution, we would like to explore more of our search space. Also, if we are confident we are close to an optimal solution, we would like to fine-tune it. However, if we maintain the covariance parameter fixed, we will not be able to spread or shrink our sample to do that. One variant of the evolutionary algorithm is the Covariance Matrix Adaptation Evolution Strategy, or CMAS. As its name implies, the method's innovation consists of adapting the probability distribution's covariance matrix. This approach is illustrated in this animation. You can see that it has those spread and shrink effects that we want in order to reach better solutions. In this work, we ran three CMAS optimization tasks dealing with scenarios with an increasing degree of difficulty. The first task was the no opponent, shown in the recording, in which two teammates must score goals as fast as possible without opponents in the field. The second task was the static opponents, in which two teammates must score goals as fast as possible with three opponents in the field. However, the opponents cannot move. The third task was the dynamic opponents, in which two teammates must score goals as fast as possible with three opponents playing as an aggressive defense. These tasks were inspired by curriculum learning, a machine learning methodology in which you start the learning process by training the model with easy examples and then gradually increase the task difficulty. CMAS generated samples of univector parameters for the three tasks, which were evaluated by running N simulated matches. In each simulation I, we positioned the teammates and the ball randomly in the lighted field. The fitness function measures the average time in seconds that the teammates take to score a goal in each simulation. And the amount of time that the teammates take to score a goal in the i-th simulation is described by TI. The idea behind TI is to punish non-successful simulations. So, if the time required by the teammates to score a goal is lower than T max, the maximum time frame of a simulation, TI will be exactly the amount of time the robots took to score the goal. But if Ti reaches Tmax without scoring goals, Ti will be 1.2 times Tmax. Also, regardless of the simulation time, if the opposing team scores a goal, Ti will be 2 times Tmax. Regarding the results, task no opponents evolved 50 generations of populations of size 10 with n equals 10 and tmax equals 5 seconds. The plot shows the worst, medium, best and best ever fitness values obtained per generation. The best ever fitness value was around 0.6 seconds. Task static opponents evolved 75 generations of populations of size 10, with n equals 10 and tmax equals 7 seconds. The best ever fitness value was around 0.63 seconds, a slightly longer time frame than the last task, which we expected given the increased task difficulty. Task uh, dynamic opponents evolved 75 generations of populations of size 10, with n equals 5 and tmax equals 10 seconds. The best ever fitness value was around 1.26 seconds, a longer time interval than the last task, which we also expected given the increased task difficulty. So, in conclusion, using TMAS and optimization tasks with increasing difficulty, we obtained a set of univector parameters with which two teammates performed substantially better in VSS simulated games. 
they went from not scoring any goals in a 10 second long game simulation to scoring goals in an average time frame of 3.57 seconds. It is also worth mentioning that the Itandroids VSS team won the 2020 Latin American Robotics Competition using the optimized parameters obtained by this work. In future works, we could apply the same methodology to other optimization tasks or optimize other parameters, like those used in low-level controllers. Or try to perform the same tasks with Fetusim, the game simulator currently used by the VSS League. And even run simulated games in parallel to increase the number of fitness evaluations without increasing the execution time of the optimization algorithm. Finally, I want to thank all the organizations that supported this work and thank you for your attention.